Welcome back to Berm Peak. I'm Seth, and today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different, but kind of the same. It's slim pickings in the product spin. Seems my brutality has backfired. A lot of companies just don't wanna send products here, so amassing enough products that are interesting enough to do a review on, it was pretty difficult. We normally get a lot of stuff like this, and I, I can't review this. This is a saddle cover. You don't wanna see me review this. Do you wanna see me review this? Let me start by disclosing that I am extremely biased against saddle covers. The reason that your butt hurts after you ride is because you don't ride enough. The more you ride, the less your butt hurts. I know people who don't even wear padded shorts or anything all day. Don't get tricked into getting a saddle cover. With that said, this looks like a slightly more advanced saddle cover. This is very, very light and thin. This is not like saddle covers that I've been used to seeing. It's got this sort of mesh in there, almost like a honeycomb. This might be better than I originally thought. This is definitely low profile. Now, what I don't like about it is that it's made of this grippy material. And a saddle Saddle should be made of smooth material so that your leg can slide back and forth. What happens with the grippy material is that you end up chafing your leg. But I'm gonna sit down on this and take it for a little pedal and we'll see how it feels. I don't know why you would spend half the cost of a new saddle to put padding on your saddle. If you're actually riding your bike in the woods, which is what this is marketed for, it's marketed like for a racing saddle, you're not gonna put a saddle cover on it. You want that narrow, firm saddle. I still don't recommend you get a saddle cover. Try going on like four or five rides and then taking a break and then get back on your bike and tell me if your butt hurts. So the next product is called the Mule, and this is designed for racers who wanna be able to repair a flat as quickly as possible. It's designed for speed above all else. This holder right here holds the CO2 with a magnet. We're gonna see if that's strong enough. This is your plug applicator, and it's also held in with a magnet. So you're supposed to pre-install a plug into it, and boom, it's ready to go. So you're supposed to mount this up on your handlebars and you're supposed to mount the CO2 somewhere else on the bike. I must admit, I am skeptical about holding a CO2 cartridge to the bike with a magnet. It just seems like this is gonna come out. It really does, but we're gonna find out. As for the CO2, you really have to pull on it to get it loose. I guess we'll send a slope style course on my hardtail. So this is gonna get spicy. Dude. I took the wrong line. Look at that. It's the, Everything's uh, on. Everything's on. Where's the handlebar? I was handlebar? trying to escape from Oscar. All right, I sent it pretty hard <laughs> and went through the rock garden on a hardtail. Everything's exactly where I left it. I'm impressed. Okay, so we'll do a little dramatization. So you realize that you have a flat. Oh crap, okay. Okay, it's coming out here. Boom. Okay, you definitely have your plug, the fastest of any product I've seen. Boom! Now you have your CO2 as fast as possible. This is pretty good. I'm especially impressed by how strong the magnet is. You could just use that as your permanent CO2 holder and it's never gonna come off. Products are designed to do all sorts of different things. Some of them are designed to look good. Some of them are designed to have lots of features. This is designed to be fast. For a racer, I think this would be really good and it absolutely does everything it says. So yeah, good job. So on almost every mountain bike, there is a stem cap. It's this cap that goes on the top of the stem to tighten down the bearings in your headset. And because it's easy to remove, reinstall, there are lots of products that kind of fit on the stem cap. Now the first one is not a stem cap, it's a stem captain. Now, if you haven't figured out already, it's just an analog clock that goes in your stem. Now, normally I would think this is really cheesy, but it's really well made. They have a separate piece that locks on. They have a set screw in the side. They have a beautiful chrome plating that goes around the clock. Look, they even have that very satisfying film that covers it up so that you can have it brand new. I mean, look at that. So that goes there. We put our top bolt in there. Tighten that down. Oh, that's gone forever. I saw it hit the ground. Oh, oh, I found it. Check it out. It's actually a nice set screw. They really turned up the class on this whole thing. So we're gonna put on our stem cap. I'm sorry, stem captain right here. 
Wow, it's tight fit. What more is there to say about the Sim Captain? It's classy, it's solid, it's machined. You always know what time it is. That should be their motto, Stem Captain. You know what time it is. This is a cool way to be totally hands-free and know you're getting back before your lunch break. I think that's cool. You don't have to, that's my opinion, but yeah, Stem Captain, pretty sweet looking product. It's pomegranate juice. Actually, this is like pomegranate cider and it's disgusting. You'd have to pay me to drink. I'm actually being paid right now. So the next product is also a stem cap product. It holds an Apple AirTag. So it looks like this, it's just this little puck. And the fact that this could be used as a security device in your bike is pretty cool because most people would not suspect that you have some kind of an air tag in your stem cap. We put this stem cap holder into the bike. It sticks up a lot like the stem captain, maybe a little more because it's, it's got a whole, whole air tag inside of it. They give you this little thing to secure it. Now your air tag is totally out in the open, but it doesn't look like an air tag and it's actually tracking your bike. Okay, so Kevin, you go and hide the bike. Let's see if I can find it. Searching for signal. So now I gotta go outside, see if it can pick up a signal. Okay, it's connected, we're getting closer. Okay, it says it's 13 feet to my right. If I were to take a wild guess, I would say it's uh, behind the landing right over here, but let's get closer. And there it is, there's my bike, three feet nearby. So I don't think this is gonna replace like a GPS tracker or something like that. The product is cool, it's well designed, it's low profile, it's made of metal. I just don't know how effective it's gonna be if your bike actually gets stolen. I give it a undecided, but it's well designed. Okay, so you're trail building. How many times do you do this? Because you got crap inside your shoes. Introducing the bandits. So this fits over your normal shoes and keeps debris from going inside of it while you're trail building. And it was actually invented by a builder up in New York. I've ridden a lot of trails that he's built and so I really wanted to review this. So you can see it's made of like a strong kind of denim material but it's still pretty lightweight. You take both these hooks and then you hook them into your bottom lace. So this goes under, seems like that would get pretty dirty. And then this one barely fits for me because I got these big daddy calves. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave one bandit on and the other shoe I'm gonna leave with nothing. And we're gonna do a little bit of trail building. All right, so that was about a minute of trail building. Let's do a little damage check here. So this shoe, yeah, I got a little loam inside it. <laughs> Needless to say, there's nothing underneath the bandits. My shoes are pretty clean. The bandits themselves, you're probably gonna wanna shake out, let dry, maybe even put in the washer, but you know, the best part is it's really comfortable. I like trail building in sneakers because I like to be able to hop on my bike and test something. Main criticisms about the bandits is that, is this bottom strap going to get worn away? Because you're just stepping on it every single time. I'm not gonna say I have a better solution for it because I don't. Cool product and much love to the creator. So the next product is a tubeless valve stem, except it's Schrader. This Schrader valve is supposed to go tubeless. It's made by Miles Wide. Very nicely constructed, very nice finish. And they included this Everclear rim tape. It says make any rim tubeless. Let's just see if we can use this rim tape and this to make this old 26 inch wheel from the 90s tubeless. So we've got this taped up as best as I could. Let's install the valve stem. Make a couple of cuts in there. We're gonna push this through, little rubber O-ring, and then we're gonna tighten it down. Although this doesn't really wanna tighten down because this is a single walled rim. Something tells me this is not gonna go. I think it's make any rim tubeless, but probably not make any tire tubeless. They probably want you to use a tubeless tire, but let's, let's see how this works. Let's get pumping. I mean, I can't even get it slightly to see. It's not airtight. I just find it odd that they would make a blanket statement, make any rim tubeless. It doesn't appear to be much different from other rim tape that I've used. But if you search YouTube for ghetto tubeless, you have to wrap tape around the rim 
so many times that it builds up to the point that it creates a seal. And I believe that this would work for that because what I'm finding with the Schrader valve, although the rest of it was a complete fail, it's not clogged up with sealant at all. I mean, the air is just going through it completely freely and nicely. If you are doing one of those custom tubeless jobs, this is the valve you want to use. It's got nice big portholes and it looks good. And so I don't know what to tell you about this product. It's gonna have a really limited appeal. Although it doesn't work for what I'm trying to do right now, this is a pretty nice tubeless valve stem if you need a Schrader one. Gonna apply to 0.00001% of the audience. So next product. His ride shotgun seat. I assume people are sending me stuff like this now because they realize that I had a little baby daughter. Of course, one of these days, I'm gonna wanna take her out on my mountain bike if uh, my wife lets me. So let's see what's going on inside of here. Now, I'm gonna start by saying that I don't know a lot about this stuff. I believe another company came up with this concept first. And so this is not like an invention, but it is their own design. Basically what it lets you do is put this little seat up at the front of your bike with handlebars and everything sit your kid down on it so they're in front of you. Really impressive packaging. The parts are reasonably lightweight too. So this is attached to your handlebars and they're like Bleh! And then here is the seat. Nice and soft, nothing special. Ooh, okay. The rest of it was pretty lightweight. This is not lightweight, but I think it has a very important job to do. So because my baby daughter is not really big enough to do this yet, we're gonna put it on Kevin's bike and use that to test it. Little baby bars. Little tiny baby saddle. <sighs> All right, I guess we'll uh, try her out. Okay. Oscar, you better get the hell out of the way, dog. I'm with it, I'm ready. Oh yeah! Oh, 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 you're pedaling? You're trying to go faster? Dude, we're dead! We're dead if you don't stop! Oh! All right, so thoughts on this thing. It's probably the single worst product I've ever used in the history of product reviews. It's uncomfortable, it's terrifying, it moves all over the place. I can't even use the foot pegs because I'm too scrunched up. Now, how it would work for a two-year-old it actually seems like it'd be pretty good. The seat's got plenty of padding. These seem to be the right distance. Yeah, if you want to double up on how many people you can carry on your bike, this is a pretty bad way to do it if you're talking adults. <laughs> so the next product is a lithium ion air pump. I'm interested how it works for bikes. Does have a Presta valve at the end, which is a nice touch. You can take it off. Then you have Schrader that could be used for your car. So nicely designed product, but does it pump enough air to be useful? So we're gonna find out. I just wanna see if it inflates fast enough to see the tubeless tire, because I know that a floor pump does. Now, another cool thing about this pump is it costs as much as a floor pump. It's 40 bucks, not a bad price. It's rechargeable with USB-C, big plus. That micro B crap shouldn't even exist anymore. And you can see there's a nice little readout for your air pressure. Ooh, nice little light, so if you're working at night, not, not very bright. I think my phone light is brighter than that. Okay, so there are a bunch of different presets, like basketball, eight PSI. Car tire, 35 PSI. Bicycle, 45 PSI. So I'm actually gonna lower that down to what a tubeless tire is gonna be at. So we're gonna go down to 20. Put this little guy on here. Ah, oh, you just press this button once. I'm not so sure it's faster than a high volume floor pump. I'm sure we're gonna edit this down and it's not gonna be in real time, but it's already been like a minute. Okay, so that worked pretty freaking slow. Let's do the same thing with a floor pump and see how long it takes. Okay, so we're at zero PSI. Each pump's gonna be like a PSI and a half. There. Okay, that was like a fraction of the time. So this is not a replacement for a floor pump. If you really need the do it all tool, you still need to have a floor pump with you. But I do like the feature of being able to just set the pressure and just walk away. Pretty decently designed, looks nice, feels nice, seems to hold the charge, but like, I'm speaking to a biking audience, 
this is not gonna be useful at all. Just get a good floor pump. All this is gonna do is save you the energy of using a hand pump yourself. So those are all the products that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed us going out there and trying them out, as unscientific as it may have been. If you're an entrepreneur, inventor, whatever, and you're brave enough to send me some products, then I left some information below where you can mail them to me. And if none of the products you saw today pique your interest, well, maybe a Burn Peak shirt, or jersey, or beanie wood. We're constantly making changes and adjustments to all the Burn Peak apparel to make it as comfortable as possible. Our shirts are all made with a cotton polyester blend. Our jerseys do not irritate your nipples. We have lots of other stuff if you want to rep Burn Peak. Don't get it to support me. Get it because you deserve it. Check it out on CognitiveMTB.com. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time. Dude. <laughs> It's concentrate, so you're supposed to dilute it like a whole bunch. So I drank the concentrate. It tastes like pomegranate syrup. It's disgusting. Okay, I'll start with this. Whoa! I got no brakes. <laughs>